Go ahead. So our next speaker is Professor Huang Li, who kindly agreed to give us a tutorial on quantum metrology. Uh, please go ahead. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Yeah. First, I'd like to uh, say thank you to the organizers in, for inviting me. Yeah. Today's. Uh, let's see this. Yeah. The, Title of my talk is Introduction to Quantum Metrology. Uh, but I, I probably, I will just say what uh, is included in quantum metrology. So the topics are more like this, sub shunt noise, optical interferometry, and Heisenberg limit interferometry, uh, parity measurement, and phase estimation, and photon loss effect on that, and if I have time, I will go with the uh, SU11 interferometer. Um, so, quantum metrology, uh, to me, it is a quantum mechanical description of, of uh, measurement. Okay. And then, to a lesser degree, it is precision measurement beyond classical limit. Yeah, yeah. Oh, of course, yeah, it is probably the same, same thing, quantum enhanced pre precision measurement. So, yeah, I, I like to see what others are saying. So Wikipedia is saying that uh, it is study of making high resolution and high sensitive measurement. Okay, and it, it says particularly exploiting quantum entanglement and quantum squeezing. Yeah, that sounds fine, except for this quantum squeezing. Yeah, there's, there's no classical squeezing. So the quantum squeezing is the same as squeezing. So that was uh, my complaint for that. And I look for some books in the, in the library. And recently there came uh, two books. Yeah quantum metrology and introduction to quantum metrology. So it is yeah, establishing a uh, big field now. And it also says particularly using quantum entanglement. Okay. And then this uh, library search give me this list of publications and this is the uh, dissertation by the uh, graduate student in, in quantum group. Yeah, there, uh, the latest one using this quantum metrology in the title is Nick Studer. And the first one was uh, Ryan Glasser, who is here. And uh, Sean Fubar. So, yeah. This uh, Nick Tudor is now in Naval Research Lab. And Cheng Long and Brian and Kaoshik are uh, postdocs. Uh, LSU and Virginia Tech. And Kaoshik is in Arizona, I think. And here, Baska, Kawe, and Arabin, and Sean, they are in the industry. Baska is in, in the Ford, Ford company, and Kawe is a geoscience research company, and Arabin is Harman, Harman, Harman Corporation, which is uh, uh, associated with the Samsung company. And Sean is in uh, NVIDIA. So they all have uh, good jobs. Yeah, of course, uh, Ryan is professor in, at Tulane. So quantum metrology, yeah, might lead you to a good job in the, in the future well, for the graduate student. Okay, so Quantum metrology, metrology included, includes these things, sub noise interferometry, 
Heisenberg limited interferometry, quantum enhanced phase estimation, quantum sensors, and standard quantum limit, and beyond. Yeah, I will briefly discuss standard quantum limit, but not on the beyond situation. The beyond situation requires uh, quantum non-demolition measurement. Yeah, but I will not discuss on that here. Okay, so let's start with uh, Mahajanda interferometer. So here is the light source and there's a beam splitter make it a two pass for the uh, light wave. And there's a mirror bounce back and there is a phase shifter and that could uh, represent the path length difference or the phase difference due to the index change, index change difference uh, between these two passes. Okay. And then there's a second beam splitter combines the beam and the detectors and analyzer. This is uh, in some sense uh, equivalent to uh, the famous Young's double slit experiment in, in a sense that the beam splitter uh, represents the two slits okay? and of course two passes and here the second beam splitter and the detector setup all together this much all together is equivalent to the, the screen on which the interference pattern is written. Yeah. So for yeah, quantum group graduate students, they all have their own Mahajanda interferometer. Yeah. At some point, at some point, yeah, they need to draw uh, this Mahajanda interferometer. Yeah to be presented in, in their papers. And more and more these days, yeah, this Mahajanda interferometer is becoming like this. More graduate students are into this. So, yeah, this is, yeah, nowadays Mahajanda interferometer. Initial two passes input and final two passes output. And here, beam splitter is there, has to be presented as a unitary gate. And this one has a benefit that uh, you could have a multi pass interferometer. So you add a few lines more, then it becomes a multi pass yeah, quantum interferometer. Okay, so this is Mahajanda interferometer. And uh, what I will do, the, so, so what do we get at the output? The output is uh, measuring uh, intensity difference. So here is the intensity from this output and intensity difference from yeah, that output and the difference. And the difference is, yeah, function of this phi, and it uh, becomes a cosine phi. So the input intensity multiplied by cosine phi is the, the signal, the same. So, so we plot this output as a function of this phi, then, yeah, like a cosine curve there. And given that signal, you can uh, like infer, infer the phase difference. So signal, reading the signal and give you the, that give you the phi value. Okay. That's yeah, simple. So now if the signal has some uncertainty, some errors or 
the several repeated experiment will give you a different values, then there is an uncertainty associated with that. And well, that uncertainty in the signal was just directly proportional to this uh, uncertainty in the, the phase estimation. Okay. And it is the best uh, working on the point of yeah, this part here, same thing here. So where the slope, slope is the biggest. Yeah, that's reasonable. So that yeah, any small change of phi will give you the, the biggest change in the signal. So you always wanted to walk at this uh, highest slope point. And that happens at uh, phi equal to pi over two. So typically when they uh, work with the Mahagenda interferometer, they put an additional, additional uh, phase shifter in the um, lower, lower arm of the interferometer so that uh, the null point is working at the uh, pi over two point. Okay, then let's say the error, error in the signal is yeah, of course proportional to that uh, error in the phase difference. And this is like a Taylor expansion first order term. Okay. So, so it only contains the slope, okay. ignoring the second, second order term. And slope is the maximum at pi over two. So we put this one uh, here. Uh, the slope is now sine phi, i times sine phi, yeah, minus there. Okay. And then we could say the minimum detectable phase shift, which is called sensitivity, would be equal to the error here in the signal and divide by the slope. Okay, and slope, if you walk on the pi over two point, it is divided by the intensity. And classically, classically we say uh, there's no fundamental, fundamental um, limit to make this uh, signal uh, error go to zero. So everything works fine, then delta m equals zero, and you could have infinite, infinite precision. Delta phi doesn't have any, any errors. So that's the classical limit. Delta phi goes to zero. But uh, quantum mechanically, quantum mechanically, we need to have a uh, observable, and um, yeah, quantum state is needed to evaluate signal. So here the observable is the photon number here, detector C minus uh, photon number at detector D. So that corresponds to the intensity difference, but in the quantum mechanical description, it is yeah, C dagger C minus D dagger D like that. And the signal is yeah, expectation value of that hmm, observable. So we uh, need the input state to evaluate that, uh, that expectation value. Okay. And yeah, it's a straightforward and same as classical situation. It is n bar, n bar num average number of photon and multiply by cosine phi. Yeah, that's up to that, it's the same. But the noise, noise, the uncertainty in this observable, yeah, of course, this should be calculated with the uh, input state, but that noise has yeah, intrin intrinsic value, which is yeah, square root of the 
uh, average number of photon. So, yeah, what am I saying? The minimum detectable phase shift is, yeah, as before, it is delta A, the noise in the observable A, and then the slope of signal change, slope of signal change. And there, this square root of average number of photon is the, is the limit, it's a quantum limit. And uh, yeah, you cannot avoid this as long as you use the coherent state light. So that leads to one over square root and bar and divide by sine phi, that's the yeah, differentiation of cosine phi. Right? So again, we work on the pi over two points and that the minimum detectable phase shift is one over square root n bar. Okay, so quantum mechanics somehow give you that limit as opposed to this goes to zero for classical situation. Okay, so this is the benchmark of, we say this is classical limit. The state is classical, so it is the classical limit. Um, one thing to note is that this uh, square root n is not because of this coherent light. The coherent light has average number of photon there and then the fluctuation delta, delta n, fl number fluctuation here is exactly this square root of and bar, but the, the reason for this quantum noise is not the fluctuation of number in the input state. It is rather the vacuum coming into this other port of input. Yeah, that's is the reason for this uh, square root n here. And we can see that if I use a Fox state, a Fox state input, so the Fox state, a number state, so there is no number fluctuation, even if I use a quantum state of no number fluctuation, there, you get the same, you get the same limit, and you could still have this noise would be square root of n. So, if I use yeah, number state as an input, number state has this definite number n, and then delta n number is equal to zero. So this is not responsible for that. But the result is the same as this. So we attribute the noise source to be the vacuum in this unused input port. Okay, I'm taking so much time on this. So let me go fast from now. Okay, and then there is uh, the application of the squeeze state. Okay, so if, if I use the squeeze state, the unused input port, then I could have uh, the noise decreased by a factor of e to the minus r. So here I might want to, to work at pi equal to, yeah, pi over two. Good. So this is zero, and this part has a reduced noise, and as a result, the minimum detectable phase shift is become lower by factor e to the minus r. So this is the squeeze state interferometry and uh, yeah, submission noise interferometry is starting. Okay, that's 1980s. Okay, but the decrease of this uh, minimum 
he talked about friendship. Is uh, half of the story. We look at this. If I increase the squeezing, then we could uh, decrease the error in in phase uh, a, a, as much as possible. But uh, the other side, there is a radiation pressure error. So radiation pressure error is uh, due to the fact that photon has momentum and this momentum is hitting this mirror so that the, the mirror position changes ever so little amount, but it is there. And that error is proportional to the need to be R. Ah, ah, so. Okay, so you decrease phase error, but you increase the radiation pressure error. So there is uh, like the balancing of these two. You optim You should optimize. You should optimize this to make the overall uh, smallest error. So that's called standard quantum limit. So. That standard quantum limit is the minimum of this. This is called the photon counting error. Photon counting error. And uh, sorry, this is typo, it's a radiation pressure error. You optimize that to make this whole value to be uh, minimum. And that, uh, yeah, 1981, Caves yeah, introduced this squeeze state interferometry in the Mahajanda, no, not Mahajanda, it's a Michelson interferometer, and aiming for improving this uh, LIGO experiment. Okay. And there, the, the mirror position, the position error due to photon counting, which is the shunt noise one, is decreased by e to the minus r, but the radiation pressure increased this uh, uh, radiation pressure error this much. So overall, optimizing the standard quantum limit is yeah given by this factor. That does not depend on the number of photons. So the use of squeeze state is to lower the required power of this input laser. Okay. Using the squeeze light, you could, yeah, you could decrease this average number of photons for optimal situation. Okay, so that's standard quantum limit. Sometimes people use this for that with this shunt noise, but uh, to be precise, yeah, the shunt noise limit and the standard quantum limit is different. Okay, and now the scaling. So this is one of the square roots of n bar, and there is a, a the uh, enhancement factor, so to say, e to the minus r. But there is other side, is e to the plus r. So uh, this scaling with number of photons of input, yeah, it is restricted by this radiation pressure error. So all together, it is better than one over square root of n, but it ends up with uh, one over n bar, uh, three quarter, okay. three quarter, yeah, power of average number of four. Okay. So that's optimal scaling with the squeeze state. Okay, then if the scaling is going like one over n bar, which is like better than one over square root n bar, of course, and better than one over three, n bar three quarter. And this one over n bar is called the Heisenberg limit. 
and people uh, tried to reach this limit with uh, various input state, yeah, typically with the number state and typically with the correlated number state, the two, uh, two input, yeah, different photon numbers, but superposition of yeah, different combinations. So we call this as a correlated fast state. And that developed in 1985, 86, 83, there's something called the dual Fox state, this same number of photons. And they've become more sophisticated. And some state is called intelligent state. And with this yeah, complicated form of uh, Fox state combination. And another one is called optimal state, optimal state. And that's also contains yeah, complicated amplitude for the combination of Fox state. Okay. And then 2000, year 2000, there comes uh, a moon state. And moon state, yeah, similar to this dual Fox state, has a very uh, simple form very simple form. And moreover, this state will give you exactly equal to one over M uh, scale. So among all the states, this would give you the best uh, yeah, best sensitivity scales like one over M. So it looks like this noon state concord this uh, Heisenberg limit interferometer. And there are a lot of yeah, experiments out to make this moon state. Yeah, all goes to nature and science. And as year passed, it is demoted to yeah, PRL. Then, yeah, even after noon state, there are uh, people are still you know, try to, to find the best state. And this one is advertised as entanglement free Heisenberg limited phase estimation. And this is using 1001. So if it's a single photon, 1001 state, is that entangled state or not is yeah, debatable. And also this is high noon state mixing by uh, squeeze light and classical light, coherent state. And this is quantum light, the squeeze state light. So this seem very much like the cave scheme of coherent light and squeeze light. When their average number of photon is same, then the output, output is more like the moon state. That's, uh, yeah, 2010 result to make you know, the high noon state. Okay. And on the other hand, this, yeah, the measurement on the noon state is uh, initially, initially yeah, developed by Wineland group at least. And it is with the uh, uh, so-called GHG state, generalized GHG state, all the atoms are in the ground state and all the atom superposition with all the atoms in the upper, upper state. And those get, uh, as time evolves, the phase gets yeah, N times. So it has a better uh, precision there. And the measurement, uh, measurement observable, observable would be sigma z, and it's a multiplication of sigma z. Typical uh, spectroscopy situation, the measurement is sigma z, and it is plus, it's a plus of all the atoms. So it is counting uh, number difference between the excited atoms and the uh, ground state atom. But here, the new measurement observable is multiplication of sigma z. So it is whether 
you know, one or minus one. And that is called a uh, yeah, parity measurement. And yeah, this is theory paper. And about 10 years later, they uh, make it work. And uh, so three atoms entangled and uh, the phase measurement was successful and the square root three uh, enhancement factor is absorbed. Okay, in the optical situation, yeah, Chris Gary proposed, yeah, parity operator. This is with the number of photons. And for noon state, if you measure this uh, parity, then it reveals this high phase sensitivity scales like one over. And that parity measurement was applied to all the other. all the other quantum state. And at some point we, we could have uh, made this uh, unified scheme of measurement. And here, thus making parity measurement as a unified uh, measurement strategy. Okay, so far, so good, but... Uh, this applies also to uh, beat the Heisenberg limit with the uh, uh, two mode squeezed vacuum input state. So beating Heisenberg limit is looking more like this. And then the question of ultimate limit arises. So it beats Heisenberg limit, but uh, what's then, uh, what is then the ultimate limit? And the ultimate limit is yeah, on this, this is quantum uh, Kramer-Rau bound. So that bound, the parity measurement is, yeah, actually equal to this bound. So that was kind of surprising. And later on, the parity measurement, yeah, happened to be, yeah, work for most of the quantum state inputs, okay. But it happens only in the local phase estimation. Yeah. Okay, so I would like to talk about this uh, ultimate limit and its attainability and local versus global, but my time is up. Isn't that right, Mark? Um, yes, essentially. It, it's such a nice tutorial that I didn't want to interrupt. Um, do you want to just give some closing statements? Yeah. Or say a few words about this and then we'll, um, that'll, that'll be the end of the talk. Yeah, let me, yeah, let me pass that, all, all of them. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I will go all the way to the end point. So local and global. Global means without any a prior analogy, we are developing the exact value of phi. Then local means we already know where it stands. So the approach to get this uh, minimum detectable phase shift is different. That's all I wanted to say here. And that ultimate limit is called the quantum Kramer bound. Okay. And yeah, I pass this. And then there is a problem with the photon loss. All this squeeze state, Fox state, moon state, everything is suffer from the photon loss. And some people are saying that Noon state does not be able for use practical remote quantum sensing. Okay, Heisenberg limit is never achieved. So a lot of criticism. Okay, and then there are, yeah, a lot of efforts to avoid this, uh, yeah, photon loss effect. And the Wamsley group at UK, they uh, say that you should divide this 
large immune state into a small immune state, and that is becoming uh, uh, more robust to the photon loss. Okay, so fighting with the photon losses. And then, yeah, I should mention this a little bit so that uh, we ditch this uh, noon state and use coherent light and uh, with parity and homodyne detection to uh, beat this uh, resolution, uh, the diffraction limit resolution. And we call it just quantum radar at some point. This is uh, 2013. And then, yeah, it was quiet, but then 2016, uh, there appeared this uh, two papers for quantum LIDAR, yeah, quantum LIDAR from uh, the same uh, Chinese group. And this is here. Uh, I don't know, I don't, I didn't know you are working on quantum LIDAR and tell me everything about it. Yeah, this is the phone call from uh, a DOD, DOD of officer to Jonathan Dowling. So yeah, DO, DOD somehow yeah, got surprised and they uh, started fund Dowling. Yeah, of course, yeah, there's interesting part is uh, probably DOD asked uh, uh, Professor Shapiro about uh, the feasibility of that uh, quantum radar by Dowling. And yeah, Shapiro yeah, concluded that uh, consequently the super resolution claim need major revision. So this yeah, objective. Nevertheless, nevertheless, 2019, yeah, this is 2019. Yeah, this is some military news say that the China reveals prototype configuration of this quantum data. So that was shot and we were asked whether this is true or not. Yeah, but uh, the, the news announcement was only uh, confined to Chinese media only. So we will never know what was actually done and there. Okay, and then I'd like to mention uh, Dixon's uh, recent work on the quantum radar and this is uh, yeah, very nice work and yeah of course yeah that will continue yeah skipping this yeah okay so i just briefly mentioned this space estimation and heisenberg limited interferometry and photon loss effects there okay i hope this will be a brief Introduction to the next talk it will be given by staff. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much for your attention. Sorry for the, yeah. All right, thanks a lot for this introduction. This was really nice. Um, we should probably not have any questions and, and move on to the next speaker.